Hey everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about different representation of graphs. In the previous sessions, we have already discussed about what are graphs and what are some terminologies related to graphs. In this session, we are going to see what are different representations of graphs. So without any further delay, let's just start. So if you will read a lot about graph theory, then you will find some of the representations of graph like adjacency list, adjacency matrix, as well as incidence matrix. I've listed one more here, adjacency map. We are going to discuss about it. It's nothing but an optimization over adjacency list only. But one by one, we are going to see each one of them. So in a nutshell, if we try to explain each and every one is, then in an adjacency list, we try to represent the overall graph as an array of linked list. In an adjacency matrix, it is represented like a 2D array. In an adjacency map, it's an array of hash map. And inside incidence matrix also, it is a 2D array. Right. So let's just see one by one. What are all of these representations? What are some caveats around all of these representations? How you can represent them in your memory? And what are some benefits associated with few of them? Okay. So let's just talk about adjacency list. So let's say that this is your given graph. Let's say this is your given graph G. Okay. So what adjacency list does is it represents graph in the form of array of linked list. Right. Okay. So now there are two data structures involved. Array is going to basically represent vertices. And this linked list is going to represent edges. Now here you can see I have an array where each index of the array is corresponding to one of the vertices. So this is according to zero, then one, then two, then three here, four here, so on and so forth. So each array index corresponds to one vertex. Okay. Now, what is this array of? This array is of linked list. That means each array index, each array index is kind of like a bucket. It kind of like a bucket which stores a linked list, right? Now, what is that linked list going to be? So here you can see that if let's say we are talking about the zeroth vertex, then in the linked list, we are going to add all of those vertices, which are direct neighbors of zero, or you can say the adjacent vertices of zero, right? So here you can see zero is connected to one and zero is connected to six. So this is how the linked list looks like. Let's just take one more example. Let's just talk about something like one. Here you can see one is connected with zero, two and five. So there will be three entries. Zero, two and five, right? Now here you can see that because I have represented this graph as an undirected graph. So this zero is having a vertex one associated or attached to it. And this one is having a vertex zero attached to it. So actually these linked lists are going to represent edge that there is an edge from zero to one and zero to six. There is an edge from one to zero, one to two and one to five, right? Now you can think about this for a directed graph also in a directed graph. If let's say zero is directed towards one, then we will be having an entry of one inside zero, but there will be no entry of zero inside one. I guess that is pretty obvious. Okay, cool. Now these linked lists are not present in any particular order. There is no order that you have to maintain specifically. Like when you are taking the input of the edges, then one by one, you can add these vertices in your linked list. So order is nothing of any concern, but why we are keeping a linked list here? That's a big question. How about if we try to do with an array of array? What's a problem in that? Now there are some huge advantages associated with linked list. Let's just list few of them. So if you are using a linked list, then linked list are space optimized, right? Linked list are space optimized. Also the operations like add at head works in O1 time. If this works in O1 time, then let's say if I'm working for two, right? So two is associated with one, four and three. So let's say I add one. So currently the linked list is empty. I can directly add a one here. Now, if I want to add four 
as the vertex so let's say two four edge i want to add so i will be adding a vertex inside the link list of two right now in order to do that i can use the add at head operation how add at head works we will first make a node two right i will make two point to the head of this bucket sorry this should be four this should be four four point to the head of the bucket and now we will make head of the bucket point to four now only in three operations we will be able to add a node and you can see this is a constant time operation so now eventually this looks like something like this so this is four one and then later you can also add a three here also so operations like add at head will be will help you to add a new edge in o1 time so you can add an edge from two to four also and inside four also you can add an edge by adding something like four to two right okay now can we use anything else you could use vectors here but the problem with vectors is if you want constant time operations with vectors you will be adding at last in order to add at last every time let's say if the vector is initially of size 2 if the vector is full it doubles its size right then again it doubles its size so there can be a lot of space wasted so let's say there are only five vertices you are associated with then there will be three waste spaces that you are not using in your corresponding vector whereas link list doesn't do that link list will only take that much space which is required also because of the fact that link lists are spread unevenly in your whole memory you will not be acquiring any contiguous memory space and that can be pretty obvious okay now you might be asking then why we are even using an array here now that's a good question why why we are exactly using array here because we want to get the access to the vertices in a much faster way if you will use a link list here also if you will use a link list here also then in order to go to any vertex you need to iterate over the link list or maybe you need to maintain any other data structure that we don't want to do right we want to get the access to the vertices so that we can add edge we can process edges corresponding to the vertices so on and so forth in a much faster way that makes sense that we keep an array here okay now there is an operation where if someone asks you that do you have a neighbor corresponding to any vertex let's say there is a vertex v and someone asks whether u is a neighbor of v or not then in order to do so you need to iterate you need to first go to the bucket of u let's say 4 and then you need to iterate over the whole link list associated with your corresponding bucket now that can be a linear time operation right if you want to optimize that you can use something like a hash map which will transform your adjacency list to adjacency map so wherever there will be an operation where you have to exactly check that whether this exists or not so on and so forth then probably you can use it or maybe you can use an ordered map if you want to store the edges in some ordered fashion so you can replace lists in those cases where you don't want to see space optimizations and all but rather want uh, a specific orientation or faster random access to the element that is going to uh, update your adjacency list to adjacency map okay now what are some benefits of adjacency list the benefits of adjacency list is it works tremendously well in terms of space for sparse graph now what is a sparse graph a new terminology sparse graphs are those graphs which are not exactly having a lot of edges right so in the previous lecture we saw something like a connected graph right so in a connected graph we were having uh, a lot of edges associated to a lot of vertices but that's not going to be the case in sparse graph there are going to be lesser number of edges if you have lesser number of edges then these link lists are not going to be very large and in that case the space that you are going to take is order of v plus e why v plus e you are taking a v length array that is going to represent all the vertices and then the number of nodes in all of the link list is going to be equal to the number of edges that you are have, having or let, let's say twice the edges because if it's an under, indirected graph then you will be having two entries per edge so there, there will be twice the number of edges that will be order of v plus e only okay now this was all about adjacency list what about adjacency matrix so adjacency matrix is going to represent everything in the form of a two dimensional array so if you this is your graph g then this is the corresponding adjacency matrix 
Now, what's special about adjacency matrix? In an adjacency matrix, if let's say this is the graph, then what you can have is you will be having a V cross V matrix. This is a V cross V matrix, right? The rows also represent vertices. The column also represent vertices. Now, if you have an edge between any two vertex V1 and V2, if there is an edge between V1 to V2, then matrix of V1 comma V2 will be equal to 1. Here you can see if there is an edge between 1 to 2, so you can go from 1 to 2 and here you can see there is a value 1 here and even from 2 to 1, there is a value 1 here. Right. So if there is an edge associated between any two vertices, the corresponding cell of X comma Y or let's say V1 comma VT is going to have an entry one, otherwise an entry zero. Let's say there is no entry between, there is no edge between five and four. So if you will go from five to four, here you can see it is a zero. Same for four to five, it is a zero. Right. Okay. Now, what, what are some benefits of adjacency metrics? Adjacency metrics are simply are very simple i would say very easy to implement you just need to have a 2d array right they works good for dense graphs right because if the graph will be dense that is each edge is each vertex is almost having uh, one edge at least with all of the rest of the vertices right kind of like v square edges then even this adjacency list is going to transform itself from v plus e to v square because there will be a lot of edges right and uh, it will uh, uh, like kind of represent itself like an adjacency matrix only because for every vertex you will be having uh, v minus one number of nodes and if there are v such vertices then obviously it will be also of order of v square so the space that you are going to take here is order of v square but the problem is even if you have sparse graph if you have a sparse graph that is there are not many edges then also it is going to take v square space but if you have a sparse graph then this is not going to take v square space this will take v plus e space so that's a problem if because it is very simple it takes always and always some extra space that maybe sometimes is not required right okay now there is one very specific benefit along with adjacency list also because you are having a 1d array here if you want to add any vertex in your graph then what you need to do you need to just double the size of the array just like how you do with the vector and go forward right and and in amortized analysis that will be theta of one kind of an operation whereas if you want to do something like that here then you don't need to just add a row but you need to add a corresponding column and then you need to copy v square elements there that can be a much more i would say expensive operation to do okay so here we can see the adjacency matrices are represented by a and a of i comma j is equals to one if uh, there is an edge from i to j and j to i for in case of undirected uh, graphs i to j and j to i like there is an edge between not from we should write edge between i and j else zero else zero okay now there is one more very interesting representation of graphs that is called as incidence matrix now you'll find very less tutorials discussing about incidence matrix as a representation of graphs so let's just see what is incidence matrix so incidence matrix is a lot of time called as m it's also a 2d matrix it's also a 2d matrix or a 2d array kind of a representation now here the number of rows are equal to rows uh, sorry number of vertices so if let's say there are n vertices there will be n rows but the best part about it is the number of columns are equal to the number of edges so see let's say this is your graph let's say this is your graph then there are one two three four five five edges i have named the edges as a b c d e right so a b c d e five edges one two three four four vertices and what is m of i comma j is going to represent m of i comma j is going to be equal to one if uh, ith vertex belongs to jth edge else zero right so let's say this two this two is having an entry one here because two is a part of the edge a if you will look at the edge a 2 is a part of edge a similarly 
3 is having an entry 1 here because 3 is a part of HC. So here you can see 3 is a part of HC, right? So if a vertex is a part of any corresponding edge, then that corresponding cell is going to have an entry 1, otherwise 0, right? So here you can see 4 is a part of D. See 4 is a part of D, E and C. So these all 3 are 1. 3 is a part of CB. So these 2 are 1. 2 is a part of AB these two are one one is a part of d and a so these two are one this is incidence matrix now the best part about incidence matrix that you can see here is the sum of the columns every time if you will sum the column you will always get a value two so the column sum is always equals to two why so because one column is representing one edge and one edge is associated with two vertices so obviously the sum is going to be two and apart from that, and apart from that, the sum of rows, if you will sum up the rows, then it will be equal to the degree associated with that vertex. Now here you can see four is associated with three edges. That means the degree is three. And if you will sum the rows, it will be one plus two plus three. That is equal to degree. So the rows, the sum of the rows is going to represent you the degree. And the sum of the columns is always equals to two. Right. So this is, uh, I would say, the uh, a very different kind of representation of graphs you can also like implement an in incidence matrix and represent your corresponding graphs okay now if you want to have if you want to have self loops if you want to have a self loop somewhere let's say two is uh, having a loop over it let's say something like this right then in that case this will be another edge so let's say a b c d e f this will be an edge f and we will be having another column for F. Now, because this is not associated with two vertices, it's a self loop. So in that case, this entry will be equal to two. Now, using this matrix, you can easily identify self loops also because self loop is always going to have an entry two. Why? Because we need to maintain the column sum equal to two. This uniformity has to be maintained. In order to do that, if you have a self loop, then you are going to put a two here. So later, if you want to detect if there was a self loop or not, it's very, very easy to do so. Right. Now, if you are having a self loop, uh, then in case of adjacency list, you're going to have your own entry inside your corresponding linked list. Right. And in adjacency matrix, in adjacency matrix, this diagonal is going to represent the self loop. So there are mechanisms for handling self loops in all of the three representations. Okay. Now, what about weighted graphs? If there is a weight associated with the edge, that's pretty simple. In case of adjacency list, instead of storing the node as the value of the vertex, you can store a pair representing a vertex comma weight associated with that edge, right? You can store this kind of a node. Similarly, in adjac adjacency matrix, either you can maintain two matrices where one matrix is going to have a zero one value representing the edge. Another matrix is going to have a corresponding uh, integer value representing the weight, or you can put the weight directly here. And instead of putting zero to show the absence of the nodes, you can show any weight value that can never exist. Let's say a negative weight in case you have always a positive weight, then you can put minus one to all those places where you don't want to represent an edge, right? This is something that you can do for the corresponding adjacency matrix. In case of incidence matrix, now in case of incidence matrix, if you want to represent the edge because the columns, because the columns are represented by the edge only, you need to separately maintain their corresponding weight, right? So this is how you can inculcate the angle of weights also in your representation of graph. In the next part, we are going to discuss about how you can code uh, uh, these representations. I believe coding incidence matrix and adjacency matrix is going to be a cakewalk. We are going to code adjacency list, right? How we can implement adjacency list and we'll try to display the graph corresponding to the list, right? So I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this session. If yes, then don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you found the tutorial useful enough and uh, do share it with your friends. And if you have any doubts, then don't forget to comment down uh, in the comment section. We would be really happy to answer them. So let's just uh, go forward with the next part and we'll meet in the next session. Till then, take care, guys. Bye bye and love you all.